it is a great topic of contention. A lot of people say that peer-to-peer -peer is much more scalable as compared to the client-server architecture because of the obvious use cases. Because you do not need a server, there can be uh, a large number of clients which can talk to each other, which is true. But that. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to talk about Discord. Now Discord has a great like engineering products. They have created like great products and put some real thought into their products. But the problem that today we are going to discuss about is how does Discord scales to 2 million concurrent voice calls. So as we all know that Discord is basically used by mostly gamers. It is now expanded to other communities also but initially it was built so that it can be used by gamers to stream their games and uh, with that also uh, talk to each other like in games like PUBG etc. So in this video we are going to talk about how does Discord basically manages 2 million concurrent voice calls connections and works so flawlessly. So uh, let's dive in. Uh, so let's suppose a uh, basic simple architecture like uh, this which you can see uh, so in this simply there are a uh, number of users who are connecting to the discord servers through a load balancer basically now how do these people communicate with each other how do they stream their uh, videos and basically talk to each other now the streaming of the video part that we'll discuss in some other video in this video we are just going to talk about how do they uh, do their voice communications uh, over this now suppose we, you are in a discord group call so it can support a, a large number of people in just one single call it can be like thousand people also which are present in just one single call so how does that happen and how are they able to take care of that so we can use two types of models in this we can either go with a peer-to-peer -peer connection or we can go with the client server model now what does we mean by this peer-to-peer -peer connection so suppose there are some clients and suppose they are just interacting with each other that would be just peer-to-peer -peer. and the other would be the client server where suppose there is a server call and then the server redirects the call to another client so what is happening is that you are speaking your whatever you are speaking is going to the server first then the server is redirecting it to the other clients which are also connected on that group call but that uh, so what do you think would be a better approach now like you can see on the screen that peer to peer is already crossed so you might have guessed it but peer to peer does not works good in cases when the number of users increases by let's say more than 100 so when the number of users are more than 100, the peer-to-peer -peer communications fail. Now why we f why it fails and does not perform good, we, we will discuss about it. And it is a great topic of contention. A lot of people say that peer-to-peer -peer is much more scalable as compared to the client-server architecture because of the obvious use cases. Because you do not need a server, there can be uh, a large number of clients which can talk to each other, which is true. But that is true just for limited number of connections so if you are doing one to one chat in that case is peer to peer would be a good model but this is a group call involving not just two three people it involves thousand people now this is also can be the reason why whatsapp or other apps like zoom cannot support such huge calls in their system so uh, now we will see how this client server architecture helps to support thousand more than thousand people calls so uh, we will discuss about how discord uses this client client server architecture now what's the issue with the peer to peer is that there is a client limit so you uh, now we will discuss it in detail like you are a client and why you are not able to support uh, more than 100 uh, people communicating with you so we will discuss that in the uh, in the we will discuss that now so now let's come to what is WebRTC. So before coming to what is WebRTC, I will take a step back and tell you that Discord uses WebRTC for communication between 
uh, the peers or whatever people which are connected in that in a particular group. So Discord uses WebRTC to make this connection and basically facilitate this call in that group call. So that group call. So what does what is WebRTC? WebRTC is basically used for sharing data. With this can be video data, audio data between multiple peers, which are generally the browsers. So you don't have to install anything. Uh, it is mostly supported in all the browsers, and it basically helps the browsers to uh, exchange the data in the form of uh, video, audio, or whatever form. And it basically creates a streaming connection between the browsers so that they can share the data as opposed to the other type of connections like the simple call, API call, which you make, which is just a TCP or HTTP call. It, it does not work like that. So it creates a connection between the browsers and helps to basically uh, share this video and audio data. Now, how will the browsers connect? Now, suppose uh, there is a, there is someone you are using a browser. You are sitting in New Delhi, and there is someone who is also gaming with you, who is sitting in USA. Now, how will you these two browsers connect with each other? Uh, you are not in the same network, so you basically would have to make a connection over the internet. Now, to make a connection over the internet, you need the uh, IP address of that web browser. It should be public also, so that you can access it. And generally, the public access is blocked. So how do you do that? So therefore, we need a server. Now we need a server to basically connect two people in a call, so that they can share their data through the audio audio calls in the browser. Now the, there are different types of WebRTC server. Uh, we are, today we are just going to talk about these two servers, which is the Turn server and the Media server. Now what does the Turn server do? So this suppose this is a turn server and there are two pairs. This is one pair and this is two pair. These are trying to make a connection with each other, basically in a group call and trying to talk to each other. So what this turn server do? It helps to relay a connection between these two pairs so that they can share their data directly with each other without server server coming in between. Why this is needed? Because as I discussed, they do they are not on the same network. They need to access the IP addresses. Now this uh, now when this happens, this causes a lot of security risk also. Like if someone has to launch a DDoS attack on your computer, it well, it can easily do that because your uh, IP is kind of now in access to them, and they can easily launch an attack. So uh, Discord does not use this strategy of this turn servers and there are other reasons also why they do not use this. What Discord uses is a WebRTC media server. Now what this media server do, it does a lot of things. So like I mentioned uh, that it is very tough uh, to facilitate peer-to-peer -peer communication when there are multiple, uh, like a large number of people in a group call. Now why does that happen? So suppose you are a you you are one of these peers, okay? So there are about thousand uh, people in that group call. Now you are communicating with each other. So suppose there are if there are n uh, n suppose there are n uh, people in that call. So you have to make at least n square connection. And per client, you have to make n connections because you have to you are in a group call. You want to listen to everybody and you want your voice to go to everybody. So you have to make at least n connections. Now this would lead to bandwidth issues and resource issues. How would it do? Because you are kind of opening a TCP connection, which is remain, which remains open, which remains open while this group call is going on. So suppose there are thousand people, and this 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 connect this connection is open for thousand people, and this is open for suppose one hour. So this, these thousand connections are open from your browser and they are uh, repeatedly, you know, communicating with each other. So this lead to a lot of CPU usage, disk utilization and a lot of other resource utilization and also a bandwidth loss. So you are consuming a lot of internet. So that's why you cannot use this as uh, a good strategy in a group call where you have to do a call with a large number of people. Now, what does Discord do or what does this media server do? It joins the stream. So what, what does it do is that it basically sits between the peers. So what does it do? Suppose there are 1000 uh, or 10,000 uh, people who are talking on this group call. Now each of this call would go through this server. Now what this server can do, it can join 
two streams or whatever people who are speaking and then relay just one stream to your connection so in that way you you are just maintaining one single connection with the server instead of maintaining 10000 connections so that's how you are reducing your bandwidth you are also reducing your cpu utilization so that's why we need a web rtc media server and that's why we need a client server model now people would argue that this server can fail this is a single point of failure but this is a distributed system so it is it is not necessary that if so this server fails we do not have other servers we have other servers clients can connect to the other servers and then make a communication now let's come to uh, different uses of this up uh, now now what does discord do apart from this introducing a web rtc media server they also do some updates on they also did some updates on this web rtc library itself so they use an updated version of this web rtc now how this updated version helps them let's see so uh, whenever you if you are using a windows laptop so try this one thing try this one experiment uh like uh, go on a uh, any call like be it a zoom call or any call and uh, si- in the side of that start a song on youtube so you would s- and use earphones to actually listen to it so when you would see that there is a big difference in the sound which comes from that uh, youtube song whenever you switch on that call or whenever you uh, open that call so why does that happen is that windows in itself attenuates all the sound when it de- detects that you are on a particular call now uh, that's a windows implementation of the web rtc now what did discord do they didn't want this to happen they wanted to basically introduce a uh, they wanted to have both the gamer sound like the sound which is coming from the game also to the user and also the user sound the people who are speaking on the other side so they want both the sa- sounds and they don't want any sound to be attenuated so they made a updated version of web rtc which can support this now what another thing what they do is that they manage your bandwidth also so most of the times in a game it is not possible that everybody is speaking all the time it is mostly there are some periods of silence so what it does it it closes the connection uh, in that time uh, when nobody is speaking and whenever someone speaks uh, it again creates the connection so the connection initiation which happens that is initiated by the client itself and not by the server so that this helps to reduce a lot of resources another thing which is used it uses elixir which is a framework which is developed on erlang and it supports a uh, concurrent programming and it is very useful whenever you have to support a large number of concurrent operations and the other thing the last thing which it uses is consistent hashing so like we discussed like if one server fails what happens next the person has to move to another backend server or let's suppose a new person is joining how will we decide that which which server the person should join to uh, so that is done with the help of consistent hashing i will not go into the details of what consistent hashing is uh, we'll cover that in some other video if you want to let me know in the comment section So that's all uh, about how Discord uses uh, Web RTC to their own advantage and made such a great platform where a large number of people can at the same time participate in a voice call, which is not supported till now by any other platform. So that's a great engineering by Discord, and I hope you like this video. Let me know if you have any questions in your comment section below. In the comment section below. and uh, i'll see you in the next one